Hey guys, Edbud here and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be discussing whether running shoe weight is important or whether it's a red herring. Before we get into the main part of the video, if you haven't done already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when new videos are launched. And it would really help the channel out if you give this video a thumbs up like. So is running shoe weight important? Everybody pours over the different weights of all the new running shoes that are released. No video is ever complete without someone talking about the weight of the shoe. All I'll say is that you wouldn't want to run a 5k even in these Jordan 5s. These clock in 670 grams. You certainly wouldn't be flying at all like Michael Jordan in these if you were going to enter some type of running based event. It kind of makes me laugh. People scrutinise every single gram and ounce of these new running shoes that are released. I mean, I do it so I kind of laugh at myself though, you know that. So today I'm going to take a look at a range of different Nike shoes, mainly because I've got lots of different iterations of certain shoes and it provides a really good comparison. I'm going to look at the different weights and see if weight really matters over shorter distances as opposed to longer distance. Okay, here goes. First up, I've got my battered pair of Vaporfly 4% fly knits here. They actually are oh, quite bad as you can see from the bomb. They do need a bit of a clean really if I'm going to put them back in the archive at some point without them just crumbling away. On the scales in a UK size 11 which is what all the shoes are in today's comparison this one's 220 grams which is about 7.8 ounces. Doesn't smell too good that one. The green machine next the Nike Vaporfly next percent. This one's a little bit heavier there's not much in it I've got to be honest. This one's 225 grams 7.9 ounces so very little in it. I think most of the weight saving there because obviously there's a lot of weight gain from the added foam is from the vapor weave upper and the new kid on the block the Nike Alpha Fly next percent. So more cushion here yes but comes at a weight penalty. This one's 260 grams in my size which is 9.2 ounces. So you've got about a 40 gram difference between these two which is about 1.4 ounces. Are you going to feel that over distance? Quite possibly. I know some people really still love the 4% Flyknit. It is a much lighter shoe. If anybody was interested the Gakuso 4% Flyknit was slightly lighter than the 4% Flyknit. Maybe it's just got less grime and dirt. <laughs> it's a little bit lighter for that. To the turbos next. So there's only really an upper change between the Pegasus 35 Turbo and the Turbo 2. On the scales the Pegasus 35 Turbo here weighs approximately 270 grams so that's 9.5 ounces compared to the Turbo 2 which is a little lighter it's got that more refined upper. They ditch the fly wires, the padded tongue, that layered mesh really making it a far more nimble shoe at least that's what it felt like to me but when I did actually weigh it it came in at 260 grams it's only 10 grams lighter than the original that's about 9.2 ounces so it's like 0.3 of an ounce not a lot really I'm sure it's a psychological thing it just feels lighter maybe how about the three shoes in the zoom fly series so the original here had a quite present upper the Lunalon in the midsole along with a nylon plate rather than the carbon fiber plate this one on the scales measures 280 grams which is 9.9 .9 ounces i don't know why i said it like that it seemed mysterious or something watching too much x files that's what it is <laughs> ah old faithful the zoom fly fly knit with its orange swoosh and the pink midsole line this one of course has a react midsole compared to the original which had Lunalon and the full length carbon fiber plate which of course everything in the world must have now. This one's a little bit heavier 290 grams 10.2 ounces. This shoe and I have got some history. So last up it's the Zoom Fly 3. Again full length react here sure does look like that midsole from the Pegasus 37. It's got the carbon fiber plate and it's 320 grams which is 11.3 ounces. That series has gone from light to heavier to heavier still. There's about a 40 gram difference again between the original version of the Zoom Fly and the Zoom Fly 3. Where have I heard that 40 grams before? So you see between the Vaporfly series and the Zoom Fly series there's a real movement forward in terms of weight. The turbos drop down in weight but we don't know what's happening with that series as of yet. Looks like there could be a new tempo type turbo shoe but it's unclear. This certainly goes against everything that I've read about Bowerman's theory in terms of making shoes lighter and the benefit that you get from that over the course of a race. So back in the 1960s 
Bill Bowerman commented that track shoes just had too much to them. There were loads of unnecessary materials, overlays, over padded tongues and trim that just wasn't really needed. He reckoned that every ounce that was saved, which is about 28 grams, from a shoe added up to about 55 pounds or 25 kilograms over the course of a mile or 1.6 kilometers. So looking at some of those weight measurements today makes you wonder, hang on, we're going in a different direction here to what Bauman originally envisaged. Apparently he used to go to some real extremes in testing of different shoe materials. He tried all sorts of stuff on uppers of shoes, including fish skin and kangaroo skin too. I wonder if the different types of fish skin actually affected the weight that much. You know, a particularly good run, for example, could have been in cod and monkfish just proved to be quite slow. I really love reading about the waffle iron story on the outsoles of some of Bauman's prototypes. Apparently he used his wife's kitchen utensils, the uh, waffle iron, to melt down urethane rubber to create that sort of classic waffle design on the outsole. Again, that seems to be a real weight-saving initiative. Obviously adding metal spikes to track shoes would give you some really good grip and traction, but that obviously increased the mass of the shoe due to the fixings that you would need and the spikes themselves being made of metal. With technology now, we see adapted different segments on outsoles to provide different traction, different areas of grip, perhaps even protection to the runner. Could help with distribution of weight, helping with stability, or to improve traction in wet conditions perhaps. Though it does make me wonder whether simplicity is actually the best thing. The outsole pattern on the Alpha Fly, for example, really is simplicity itself. There's not really much to it otherwise. It certainly does seem to be one of the most simple approaches and the fastest around at the moment. You've probably all seen young speedster Jakob Ingebrigtsen. He opted to use the Alpha Fly the other day to beat the Norwegian 5K road race record. 13 minutes, 28 seconds. Absolutely unbelievable watching. If you can check out a video of that, it really is worth it. He opted for the heavier, but newer Alpha Fly shoe to achieve that record. When looking at the outsole on the 4%, yeah, it's kind of intriguing, it's innovative, but I always found it quite a slippery shoe. I think weight, perhaps over a big distance, can make a huge difference. But I think at shorter, more grueling bursts, I think lower weight's perhaps less of a factor, as proved by Mr. Inga Britson and his brother. Man, those guys can really move. And the rest of their family too, uh, equally as quick. I think their sister set a record recently as well. So what do you guys think? Is this whole weight issue a bit of a red herring? Is traction more important? Midsole foam? I know lots of you love the Zoomfly 3. It's quite a heavy shoe there at 320 grams in my size. Does it work for you? Would you opt for the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit over the next percent or perhaps even the Alpha Fly? Would race distance really affect your choice? Let me know in the comments below. A very brief musical interlude. It seems to me that recently I've been desiring very distorted guitar bass music. So I dug out my Cramps album, Off the Bone. The way I walk is just fantastic. Their version of Domino and their almost unhinged version of Lonesome Town is worth the entry fee alone. The Lux Interior really is on form on that one, on Lonesome Town. So do check it out, The Cramps, Off the Bone. I don't think it's going to be everybody's cup of tea, that one, but there's no accounting for taste, especially when it comes to me. <laughs> Thanks for watching through to the end of the video, guys. I very much appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe and the bell for notifications of when new videos are launched. It really does help the channel out if you give it a thumbs up like too. Share this one with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.